No, because I think that the potential that Carroll actually showed uh, was such that you know he he could actually be the big man for the new age. You know, I mean, the, it sounds a bit daft, but you know he could be the big target man that could could do what you want to do, could really cause problems, and, and playing with on paper him and Suarez, you know, is a match made in heaven. I mean, it is back to fucking. Uh, pardon me. Yeah. Sorry, we'll bleep that. We'll bleep that. Uh, Larson and uh, Sutton. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's that kind of way. It's uh, Shearer and Sutton. It's uh, Douglas. It's Sh- everybody in Sutton. <laughs> it's everyone's, I mean, Sutton's, Sutton is a uh, Carol, but. But that him. was 10 years ago. Whereas now it's it's developed, it's moved on, it's it's slightly faster. It's not necessarily just a long ball up to Everybody. a number and nine and a, a head down. Everyone. It's clearly from Barcelona to um, our bros are playing three five one. Um, they're playing a pos- uh, not sorry four five one three five one. Are playing a four five one that can evolve into a four um, three three or you know what you know that's the point. I mean, if you, we were talking earlier on about um, defensive midfielders, you can actually afford the defensive midfielder now because you know it lets the defenders um, have their position and people can tuck in. Now, if you look at Barcelona, who we'll talk about in a moment. The um, do they have a big man, little man scenario? Do they need one? I mean, they obviously ha- they have a lot of little men, but <laughs> they, they had one, and they let him go. Ibrahimovic, they had a but target he, man. But he, Ibrahimovic he wasn't isn't a, a target, target, target man. man. Come, on. Come on, well, is he? Is he not? He's tall. Regarded I think he's... as one of the world's most um, technically gifted player. He's not. Yeah. He's not. He wasn't a target man. He's not a target. He's not a Carol. No, thankfully, thankfully for him, he's not. He might not have done what he's done. Um, he's not a Peter Crouch either. Um, but he's he's a tall player. And um, I think it's been found out that you don't necessarily just have to have as your your plan A is to play the ball out of the defence. And if that doesn't work, your plan B is just to punt it up to a big number nine. Um, you can have different options. And I think, unfortunately, Liverpool have been burdened with Carroll. Um, uh, well, sorry, Liverpool will be burdened with Carroll's price tag of £35 million. Because if Carroll was bought for £5 million or for £10 million or something like that, he's a bargain. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the conversations aren't as. as um, uh, they, they don't go on as long as that. 2.3 2. for Van Persie. You said it yourself yeah. as a teenager. So, you know, five million quid, it's fine. No, Damn it. I mean, I can't understand why uh, Carroll's price tag went to what it was. I mean, I, I don't think anyone, could, I don't think Newcastle could believe that the bid came in. Yeah, I mean, it was ridiculous, even in the world kind of market. Uh, and I think Carroll himself, you know, <laughs> is struggling, is struggling, really struggling under the weight of that that. That expectation, that money paid for him. He, he also had his own kind of personal problems as well, yeah. you know, at Newcastle. So, but again, I, th- I actually do think Douglas will get him on the straight and narrow. And if if he doesn't make it at uh, Liverpool, he'll be a bargain for whoever buys him next. Recently, um, the 90 Minute Cynic writers, myself, Kevin and Dermot, um, with also uh, Kieran and DJ, we've been talking about um, post goals and um, Xavi. Um, we've basically had a comparison. It was myself that brought it up. It was Chris that brought it up. Um, who's better, Skulls or Xavi? Now, we're going to talk about this um, in a in a in a you know methodical way we'll we'll start by we'll ask each other first of all who do you think's the best personally Paul Scholes Kevin and I just look for your answer I'm shaking my head so much here Christopher um, is is this a one word answer or can I go on for like 5, 10, 15, 27 minutes you'll get your um, you'll get your time just... the, the answer's shabby and um, if anybody else says otherwise then they're so wrong damn it I must be wrong, but again, uh, it's tempting, but I, I will go with uh, schools. Okay, so that's two for schools and one against. Okay, so what we'll do um, is, Kevin, um, tell me why Chavi is, or Chavi, or whatever you call him, is better than Paul schools. You start. There's, there's, there's numerous things. Um, both of them, we can say, have played with a world-class team, with world-class players in it. Um, both of them have played in a dominant team 
there's there's no doubt about that. Um, there's there's facts down in front of us to show the um, the trophies, the medals, etc. that they've won. But there's there's other things that that um, can class a player not out not out with the medal scenario. Um, I'm just going to do a wee sort of stato thing here. Okay, go for it. Is, um, there's there's one thing there that's that's on there for it's for, in regards to personal honours. Um, uh, Xavi's been I think the top three world player of the years in the last three years running. So there's, there's, so I'm sure that's a a stat that's there that he's 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 been quoted high enough that I'm sure it's in the top three in the last three years. Um, Paul Scholes hasn't actually been quoted in the top 50, I don't think. Okay. Um, so you might win your individual medals. Um, you might well be a very, very good player, and I'm not decrying him as a as a, a, a superb player. Um, but if you ask who's the better out of the two, uh, it's only, there's only one winner. Um, easily. Okay. Um, Dermot, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting what you're saying. You know, uh, Xavi is actually kind of, you know, hoovering up the honours at the minute. Uh, but I, I purely believe, I'm, I'm not saying at the minute schools would be rivaling Xavi for these honours, but in his day, he should have been. I mean, he's underrated, pure and simply. You know, uh, schools was was fantastic. And I say it was in the past tense because he's not quite the player now that he... Mm-hmm. He's thirty-seven. But he was, but yeah, that's that, that's that's the whole point. He, he was fantastic. If if there was a player that I could think of that could drop into the Barcelona yeah. team and actually do the job of Xavi or Iniesta, and you wouldn't know that one of them was missing, it would be Scholes. I think that Scholes is. Uh, I, mean, I I just can't praise him highly enough, and it, I think it is one of these things where yeah, uh, you know, he's almost a precursor to that type of player. Of Xavi and Iniesta, and they've came through the Barcelona academy. I mean, we're talking about Ellis Schools came from like, uh, you know, I, mean, there was, I think it was Cardinal Newman Catholic High School at the age of fourteen. You know, he didn't have this whole footballing education. Yeah, great uh, cricketer, as I was uh, mentioning. You know, and, and man, you signed him at the age of fourteen. And he, within two years, he was in the first team. You know, and it, it, his potential was undoubted, but not just his potential, but his ability to play in what was to become the modern. Kind of ticky tacky, I think that's what they call the Barcelona yeah. way. They can they continue to play. I mean, I'd, my admiration for for Scholes is undimmed. I think that's what makes me say that I'd, I'd go for him ahead of Xavi. Uh, in a way, I think there's a certain point that I think that well, perhaps if you put them both against each other, perhaps Xavi is the better player, perhaps. But I'll go for Scholes every day. Okay, um, I'm just going to um, read out, um, and also, I mean, we should make this precursor that. Um, I think we all agree that the two of them are genuinely unbelievably yeah. world class players. I mean, oh, I, 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 yeah. I think there's no w- doubt in that. That that j- in case that never cr- came across when I was saying that about schools, um, the the comment that Dermot just made there, where if you were to um, put schools into the Barcelona team, would it necessarily be weakened? The answer is no, it wouldn't be weakened. Yeah. Um, but the question was, who's better? Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm just going to. That's yeah. where I would. Uh, that's where I I, I, I go. F- for, for Xavi. Um, I'll just um, get some quotes um, from Xavi. Um, this is what Xavi's saying about Paul Scholes. Um, In the last 15 to 20 years, the best central midfielder that I have seen, the most complete, is Scholes. I have spoken with Xavi Alonso about this many times. Scholes is a spectacular player who has everything. He can play the final pass, he can score, he is strong, he never gets knocked off the ball, and he doesn't give possession away. If he had been Spanish, then maybe he would have been valued more. Now, they both... Okay, what do you want to say? They Actually. asked schools for an interview, but he declined. Yeah. Um, the point I was going to make was um, they asked schools about Xavi, and this, this is genuine. Um, it was on the, the Guardian website, and school says, who the F is Xavi? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously. Um, thank you. Now, that, that, that's Xavi basically saying, obviously, how, how good he thinks Paul Schools is. You know, I've heard Zidane talk about how good... You know, schools is one of those players who... There's a lot of a lot of midfielders, a lot of you know attacking players. So, you know who's your best player? It's inevitably, schools, and it's even now it still kind of brings up a Paul schools, you know. But that Manchester United team that got to that final, um, 
that you know they ultimately won it. I mean, they were absolutely dominated by by Leverkusen, by by Leverkusen, by Munich, um, in the nineteen ninety nine final. The reason they were dominated is because there was no Roy Keane and there was no Paul Scholes. Yeah, you can. Uh, the argument could be who who is the more driving force to get into the final though. Was it schools or was it Keane? Because everybody comments on the so Juventus' seventh final yeah. game, isn't yeah. it? That, Keen. That's been commented on. It's been Keen, Keane's best game ever, not just in a Man U shirt, yeah. but ever. So, is, is was the driving force? Oh, sorry, was, was the missing driving force Keane or was it schools? Well, schools, schools was a top scorer for Manchester United in the Champions League that season. So, yeah. I think it was probably schools. Oh, I'm only, like I'm being facetious. But, the but, point is, they they obviously missed both. Oh yeah, yeah without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it, look, it, it, it's one of those ones you can you can go around and around and around. Uh, they're both fantastic. They're both great. I think every club would love to have a player like that in their team. Um, and they only come around once every now and then. And it, but it's great to see it. It's actually it makes football a hell of a lot more enjoyable when you see players like that. Absolutely. Um, I mean, if you look at um, kind of you know. Looking over, you know, we're not going to judge a, 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 these players on statistics, um, but Scholes has won Le Tournois. Dermot. I, know, well, I was, I was going to come on to that. I mean, Scholes, uh record for his country. I mean, Sc- I think Scholes played his heart out for England. And uh, again, he, he says he regrets not coming back for Capello, but he wasn't given enough time uh, yeah. when he was asked to come back. But, um, but Capello, also, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. Capello um, didn't, Approach him personally. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, th- I think school is a bit of a joke, actual, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think he would have expected uh, a bit of respect. Uh, I mean, schools walked away because schools knows where he could play, knows what he could do, and Axel was being uh, jerked about by England. Okay. What's the difference between Paul Schools and Paul Robinson? And I'm going to go to Kevin. Um, respect for the country, but uh, Paul Schools, I don't. Th- Paul Robinson is. Uh, Paul Scholes had poorer players playing ahead of him yeah. and he got to the point where he went, I'm not going to do this anymore. But Paul Robinson turned his back in a country when he wasn't the best player in his position and that's what he spat the dummy out with. No. Um, Paul Scholes, again, I'll go back to it. Paul Scholes, it's, 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 it's a difficult conversation to have to, to be able to turn around and say to Paul Scholes, actually, I'm not picking you as a... Is, is my favourite player in your position because uh, we, we spoke about um, Steven Gerrard earlier on I don't think you can actually class Paul Scholes and Steven Gerrard as the same type of player Steven Gerrard's no. a, a far far more dynamic player Paul Scholes' ability was was never pace was never um, pushing a team forward it was never trying to be the I don't think Paul Scholes ever probably seen himself as the best player on the park he just he just knew he was very, very good. And what he'd done was to the best of his ability. For whereas, the team. For the team. Right. Whereas you've got somebody maybe like Stevie Gerrard who knows that I am really, really good and if I play to my ability, the whole team will follow me. And it's a, it's a different type of player. Um, I do see a hell of a lot of similarities between the two of them though. That's yeah. the big thing about it. Um, you've got somebody like... Uh, it's been, everybody knows that Scholes is... Um, Shyness is um, the the persona that he has, and a lot of people have, t- have spoke about Xavi's um, the 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 socialist views that he has, and I think the two of them are maybe in the, are, are, are cut for the same cloth. And I think that's a brilliant thing when you see that in in your modern day football. Yeah, Dermot. I I mean with schools, I would say that for England, uh, you know, I mean schools know knows where he can play football. He knows where he played uh, day and day out for Man U. Knows where he could do a job, so when he gets asked to play somewhere else, he will. He'll try it. Why he should uh, continue playing in a position that he knows that he's not very, not not very good at, but he's not working to the best of his abilities uh, to accommodate someone else. I think that's the point where he thought actually he's not giving his all for England, not because he's not giving his all, but because he's been played at a position. And uh, I think at that point it was fair enough. They says actually, no, I'll take a step back, find someone else to do it. Someone else will do it better than what I can do. I yeah. think he was operating from the best of intentions. So as much as anything else, that's the failing of an English manager. Cause oh, yeah, would, you, would you ne- necessarily see like Del Bosque or the? You don't. You don't pay your oh, pay okay, your uh, best. Uh, Argonis. Argonis beforehand would turn on and say to Xavi, "You know what? what your I'd left wing have is if you could just move over a little bit to have." Um, this is all. Type. 